Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about four things. Number one, why do we need a column chart? I will show some examples illustrating the benefits of a column chart. Then I will talk about the different components of a column chart that we need to know. And finally, I will also show how to create a simple column chart in Excel. Now let's get started. Let's take a look at the simple data set. It shows the number of cars sold by each of these seven brands in the United States in the year 2020. If we are asked to make sense of this data quickly in order to find out which brand is the number one in sales, which brand is the worst, and what is the order or the rank of each of the brands when it comes to sales, it's something that will take us some time to figure out in our head as I'm manually looking through which is the largest number, okay, BMW is the largest number, and so on. However, let's say if I show you the same data in a chart like this. Now, instantly we can see BMW is the largest brand in terms of sales out of these seven brands. I can also see Bentley is the last. I can also see Audi is the second highest and so on. So we were able to go from raw data in this table format to information and insights very quickly in this chart format. This is a column chart. When should it be used? So let's take a look at the same example, US car sales in 2020. The column chart is very effective in comparing the quantitative measurements of the categories. So in this example, brand name is the categorical variable here, and each brand name represents a category. Now, what are the primary benefits of using a column chart? It helps us to identify the order or the position of a category compared to other categories. So we were immediately able to say BMW is the highest in sales and Bentley is the lowest. We can also find out the second and the third and so on. We can visually compare the categories to identify the relative difference. So this is not exact. The chart doesn't say exactly what is the difference between the top selling brand and the second best selling brand. But what I'm pointing out here is that, is Audi so close to BMW, the top selling brand, or is there enough of a gap between them? So I can see that there is a gap between them. So what I'm trying to get to here is the relative difference between the different categories, whether they are very close, whether they are far apart, we can determine that visually from this. And that's another benefit of using a column chart. Now let's take a look at some more examples. We already saw the US car sales example. So let's take a look at something different. Let's say, for example, the number of employees by department. Um, so the columns here represent the number of employees in each of these departments. So the department is the categorical variable here. And we can also look at happiness score by country. So country again is the category and for each country, what is the happiness score? We can also see the attendance rate by student. So each student's name is here and the attendance rate of that student is displayed in the column chart. So these are just some examples to illustrate how the column chart can be used. Now using this, let's try to understand the different components of a column chart next. These are some of the components that I would recommend to get started with. X-axis, so this line, the X-axis here, represents the categorical variable that is, in this example, the brand name. Y-axis, this is the axis which represents the quantitative variable, which is in this case, the number of cars sold. The column height, the height of this column represents the quantitative variable. So for example, um, Acura, 136,982 cars sold. You can see that the height of that column is closer to the 150,000, but it's above the 100,000. So you can see that it's representing that numerical value. Some of the important things to add to your 
column chart or chart title i have it clearly mentioned here that this is representing the 2020 united states car sales next are the axis labels so you, i have given the axis label here as brand for the x axis and then the number of cars sold as for the y axis you might have noticed that in the previous examples i showed i didn't have those um, axis labels and that's because we, if we are making the title very very obvious what data is being represented then you can skip the axis labels otherwise it is important to include them the goal is to make sure that the end user whoever is viewing the chart that you have created should understand the message of the chart accurately and quickly the next one i want to talk about is a data label so you can see here that i have clearly displayed what the value is so in most cases that is recommended so you should understand how to create and modify the data labels grid lines you can see these thin lines in the background those are the grid lines it's something that can become too busy sometimes so it's important that you understand what that is and how to modify it so these are some of the key components i would say that you should become familiar with when you are creating a column chart now let's quickly jump into excel and create a simple column chart from scratch so now i am in excel i have the same data set that we have talked about which is very very small data set but it has the brand and the sales information so now first one i want to do is click somewhere outside the data because i want to go through to make sure that we fully understand the fundamentals of the chart i'm not into creating the chart as quickly as possible but i want to focus on understanding how excel creates the chart so let's go to insert i'm going to choose the 2d column clustered column chart and now we have this which is blank there's nothing there so we need to provide data to this chart so i'm right clicking on it selecting the data and this is what i want us to understand so how does excel create this chart now so first let's add a series i'm going to go and choose the series name which is the sales uh, is the numeric variable or the quantitative variable here and I'm going to remove the series values here and then select instead the sales values for each of the brands. Okay. So now Excel knows that the quantitative variable is here and I can click OK. But you will see now that Excel has already plotted the chart for me. However, it doesn't know or it has assumed the x-axis or the category axis to be one two three four five six seven which is the default so now i can click on edit and now i can say excel please use the brand names for the x-axis so it's very important that we selected the same number of values for both the x and the y so we selected seven categories and then the seven numeric values so that's it so we click ok and now you already have the column chart built it automatically puts the title as the series name we gave but you can go ahead and edit it which is what i'm going to do us car sales in 2020 for example so that'll be my title now the color the default color please note that it may be different than what you see in your excel and that's because whatever is the theme that you have selected whatever is the colors um, default colors that you have chosen may be different so mine is a little bit different than the default excel blue uh, so please note that when you create the color may look different now in order to modify this to add in the components that we talked about earlier click on the chart and you will see this plus sign up here and this started appearing in newer versions of excel I'm, I'm assuming that you have one of the newer versions and so if you do the plus it'll show the different chart elements and now as i mentioned if i want to add the title i click on this and now you'll see that the title options have appeared and then if i want the data labels i select that 
um, and then I'm just going to leave the other ones. We don't have to worry about those for now. So I've selected those and now you can see them that the data labels and the access titles options are there. Access title, I can click on it and I can just change it to brand. And similarly, I can click on this and change it to number of cars sold. It's not always easy to type when it's <laughs> oriented differently, but cars sold okay i got it so now i have entered the titles okay now let's talk a little bit about controlling the uh, data labels so i can right click and this applies to any object on the chart if i right click on the title i can edit the title if i right click on the axis title if i right click on the axis itself i can uh, y axis or i can right click on the x axis and basically any object element of the chart, if you right click, it'll give you more options to control the formatting. So I'm gonna right click on the data label and you will see that it says format data label. So I can format it and it'll open up a sidebar. Now this panel on the side is where all the formatting options are. So if for example, I click on this little arrow downward, you will see that I can go to the chart area, chart title, access, access title, all these elements or components, I can control the formatting with this side panel. Um, so anyway, just be aware that all the options are here. And as soon as you right clicked and got into any of these formatting options, then the side panel will appear and you can make a lot of changes. So in this case, I'm interested in the data labels and I'm going to go to the number and here is where I can control the the format of the number so if i'm using if i'm using any kind of currency then i will choose currency and it'll now give me those options so right now because it's the number of cars sold i'm going to choose number but i don't want any decimals because we're not going to sell half a car or something like that and so the important piece is that i wanted to have a thousands um, separator so now it's a little bit easier to read for me and so i've done that and that is the data label formatting. Now let's take a look at the colors. So if I want to change this color, so I can right click on the columns and then I can say format data series. And this will allow me to go to the fill option. This is a sub menu under the format data series and I can go and change the color. So I can do solid fill and I can change it to any of these other colors as I would like. There we go. And again, I'm not going into all the formatting options, but you can see that there are many options available. Uh, anything you choose, you will have a lot of different options uh, to control what is being displayed in a very, very granular way. Uh, but we will do that as a separate video. If you'd like me to do a video on the formatting of the chart, please post your comments and I'll be happy to do a separate video in detail on that. For now, the objective of this video was to create a column chart, which we have done now. So please visit inzara.com slash data viz, D-A-T-A-V-I-Z, to see all the stuff related to data visualization, reporting and analytics in Excel. Lots of templates, free templates, premium templates available in this topic. So please visit inzara.com. I'll see you all in the next video soon. Thank you very much for watching.